All right, starting out, this is going to be about doing turf wars and trying to help uh, guild and clan members uh, the best I can. Um, so when you go to your turf war, first thing you have is these right here. This is your um, round tree or your clash tree, whatever you want to call it. So a clash consists of round one, two, and three. So each three rounds is going to be a clash. Then it's going to start back over for four, five, and six. Then clash is going to be seven, eight, nine. Then 10, 11, 12. If I can get my pen to work here. 13, 14, 15. And then 16, 17, and 18. So what that does is you're going to have round one is going to be more of a strategic phase. So in here, you're going to pick out um, what your end goal is for round three. So like here, we picked um, E6, we picked E2, C2, and D3. With doing that, by attacking C2, we can hit B2, we can hit C3, we can hit C1, we can hit D2 out of all of those. So then you go here, and then you have four different targets or three different targets technically on that one and you have a couple other targets here and a couple other targets here so in round one you want to take for this new clash um it seems like you want to take just a couple uh, a couple targets going into round two so you don't have to worry about doing riots so when you get into two you're going to grab just a couple tiles um with that, then in round two, you kind of want to expand a little bit more. So in round two, you want to throw targets up and kind of gain a, a little bit more of where you want to be at round three. Like our goal at round three towards the middle is we want to try to hit 12 tiles. Um, and we're working on that right now in this last round, which round 18 is actually approaching. So what we did is we kind of picked a couple different random tiles to kind of move. And once you hit those, you got to try to maintain them and um, kind of go from there. Each tile right now has the same amount of Seal of Valors on it. Our goal was just to collect as many Seal of Valors. Right now it doesn't really matter on the buildings. The buildings all kind of do the same thing. You do have the influence, um, the guild resource there uh, on the buildings, but... We just really want to build up our Seal of Valor, so we start building up our troop level and kind of go from there. I'll get into uh, troop count and doing all that kind of stuff as it goes on. So anyway, so round one and round two are more strategic. Round one, you're going to take a couple. Round two, you're going to take a couple more tiles. Then when you get to round three, what you want to kind of do is you want to kind of pick and you want to kind of build up a sniper team or an attacking team and kind of... Uh, Hit all of the tiles that you possibly can, and that's your reward phase. So every third round, you're going to have what's called your reward and reset. So if you go up top up here, it's going to tell you reward and reset how much longer you have, and um, pretty much how long you have until the uh, your, your round that you're in is over. So in round three, as you see, we put targets on E1, E2, we put targets on D3, C2, and our goal was to take that whole um, group of targets right there. We're starting to get a, um, our clan. We're just trying to make sure everyone's active. Obviously with the new reset on turf wars, we're just trying to make sure we're getting as many active people as possible. You also don't want to overextend yourself. Um, in round three, you want to make sure you have enough attackers to fill in what you need to do. So if you go in round one and two, and you expend way too many troops trying to attack too many different tiles, you're actually going to run out of troops when you get to round three, and then your other teammates, or other, I'm sorry, your other clans that you're up against are just going to kind of wipe you out. So in this one, we kind of teamed up with Indian um, clan here. Um, so we kind of work with them a little bit throughout this round here as we come on. So round three goes into round four. Round four resets everything. You get your troops back, and you start your new three-round three clash again. So as you see, we, we took our, our tiles that we wanted to take, and with that, we got our 1,750 Valor per tile. Now that does break down to whatever place you are in in the, in the clan for uh, damage or troop count. 
So if you were, uh, had the highest troops dropped off, you got, you know, a bigger percentage of the actual uh, 1,750 times however many uh, tiles you got. So if you fell back in the 7th and 10th place, you're going to get a lot less. So it's going to depend on how much troops you want to place, what you're needed for your group and your clan, and how much elixir you use. We'll go over elixir and stuff like that a little bit later too. So this will be a little bit longer of a video. I'm going to try to break down everything the best I can. But honestly, I just learned about all this about three weeks ago or so. Um, so there might be a couple things that I say wrong on here. But this is kind of what my thoughts process on this and try to help our clan out to here and get things, get, get things going a little bit. Also on each tile, you have melee. Uh, so it, it's going to change depending on like this one's melee have 50% power. You also have some tiles that are going to have uh, ranged have 50% 50, 50 power. Some tiles you'll have chaos. It'll have different, um, you know, there's your ranged again. There's order have 50%. And you'll have one that's going to have it. And there's nature. Um, and sometimes you'll actually have, at least in the last clan, I don't know if I've seen it in this one, or the last uh, turf war, you can actually have a negative too. So you got to be careful what you're actually putting on. If you have some people that are heavy on ranged or heavy on nature, or right now it's kind of pretty much balanced, but as it goes on, that's going to kind of play a role into who's going to attack where. So like this one, if you have someone that's got uh, higher ranged troops, um, you're going to want them to attack, you know, chaos. If you have a couple people that have a higher chaos level, that's going to get you a nice big boost, and it's also going to help you when you start using your elixir to actually enhance your troops faster without using as much. So that kind of plays a role into it. Right now, um, I mean, obviously there's some clans that have spent a lot of money and have built their clans up quite a bit, but we're kind of taking ours easy and just kind of doing it as it goes on. So we're pretty even with a lot of clans right now. Um, so... Anyway, you start round four again. Now round four, we put a white flag on a couple different tur uh, couple different tiles because we want to let them fall to what's called our neutral troops or rebels uh, for riots. When you start getting a bunch of different tiles built up, you actually develop a riot chance. Um, and as you see down here, it says riot chance very low. Um, but you start clicking on some of these other ones here. The more tiles you take you're actually going to build up a better or a higher chance of actually having a riot on those tiles. So what we did is we sacrificed three tiles, but we strategically left D1, C2, and D3 available. So now we can expand even a little bit farther. So next round, if we want, we can take C1 and E1. Over here, if we, if we have, um, we could also take D2. Here, if we needed, we can take, hit C1 again. Um, we could hit c3 we could hit b2 and it just gives us options of where we need to go or where we where we can attack um we actually for this whole battle right here we battled russia um this russian what is it battle russia and they were a tough battle they were putting up 40 40k troops on some tiles um and it was it was a, a rough battle for a lot of this so as you see, as we go up, we'll, we'll kind of show you what we did. So four goes into round five. So round five, we ended up winning these tiles here. So a little bit more than um, what we had marked. But when when we realized how many, oops, sorry, what back went to me. When we realized how many uh, troops we had towards the last end, we kind of sniped a couple extra tiles here just to get an advancement and actually just be able to gain access to a couple more spots. So then it goes into your final round. So final round after round five goes into your final round. Um, so as you see, we lost a round, lost one here. We lost one here due to, I believe, rebels, um, whoever attacked us there. And so your round six is going to be the final round after reset. And again, now we're going to try to fill in these gaps that we have. And as you see, by being strategic, we still have lots of places. Having all these in here, we can attack here. We can attack here, here. We can hit this one. We can hit this one, this one. 
we could hit here and here. So what we were doing is we were trying to build up as many snipers as possible. Sniping is going to be attacking within the last one minute, or technically if you can get it down to 10 seconds um, left, you're going to attack with your troops and you're going to boost with your elixir just to try to get uh, a, a jump on your um, enemy without them knowing what's coming on. If you attack too early and they see how many troops you have, then it's real easy for them to counterattack and take you out. Um, so if you just build up a bunch of snipers, at that point you can have, uh, you know, five or six or seven people hit at the last ten seconds and you can take a lot of tiles that way. So, again, we put targets on certain ones. Actually, obviously targets weren't changed on this one because we're not actually attacking ourselves here. Um, but we also put notes in here. You can pin notes to the top. And it will tell you exactly what your instructions are to do. Um, and you can kind of go off of that. So anyway, round seven falls. And as you see, so everything's going to reset. We start back over. And we ended up taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiles by round seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So we actually have the most tiles on the map right now at this point. So... Again, we're going to sacrifice some tiles because we want to start back over. We're going to reestablish boundaries. We chose C1 and D4 to reestablish some boundaries for the first round. Um, second round comes around, and we ended up winning our C1. We won our D4 that we wanted, plus a couple other spots that we ended either didn't lose or we were able to hold um, and just give us a little bit more attacking power for round two. As you see, here's where we start battling with... Uh, Battle Russia, I mean, 19,000 troops to our 18,000 troops on there. Down here, we you spent 15,000 troops and really didn't get attacked too hard. Uh, 21,000 troops. Uh, so we actually wasted a little bit of troops through all this um, because we weren't sure what we were going to see. Again, this is the first clash, our first um, turf war since the reset. So we don't know how hard people are going to start going. So... We actually expended too many troops in round one, and um, which that actually hurts us, as you see coming up. So we get to the second, sorry, this is the third round. So then you get to the third round, and at this point, we only had a certain amount of snipers. So we, we chose our, our normal tiles up here and sniped at the end. And at that point, ended out with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, not a bad round. Again, our goal is to finish up with 12 tiles at the end. And as you see, we're starting to take over the map here. Here's where we kind of mess up a little bit. So, coming into round 11 is where we start spending a lot of extra troops here. We got 35,000 troops sitting on D4. So, again, with as low as our troop counts are right now, um, that's taking a lot of people to put on there to defend a, a building that really gets you not a whole, whole lot of benefits right now, uh, especially for what we wanted. We want the Seals of Valor. Um, but anyway, we spent a lot of people here. We got another 14,000 here, so we spent a lot there and 6,000 here. So we put our targets in the middle to kind of branch us out and kind of build up where we're going to try to expand for the next round. So you get to the final round again, we build up our troops, take it into the first round of the next one, and we ended up 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. We actually ended up losing uh, two tiles that round just due to not having enough snipers, spending a little bit more um, troops in round 1 and round 2. Um, we're also having a trouble with disconnect because we're trying to have some people are in Discord, some people are not, trying to reach out to them through clan chat and all that, and having people not being active uh, kind of hurts us. So go back into round 13, which is going to be round one, and you just do it all over again. We drop some flags out there. Um, not sure why those aren't changed, because obviously we changed some of those flags to targets. <coughs> Excuse me and where we want to actually keep a stronghold. I always like having strongholds where you can actually grab four different tiles, um, as well as 
you know, knowing where you're going to hit. Our goal was to finish, fill in um, the bottom, bottom-ish area. We were kind of making a U-shape down here, and we end up actually going to start trying to take just row D and E. We gave the blue team um, the top half of the map. So again, as you see, we start getting too many tiles on here, and look at the attack from um, the Rebels here. 11,000 in just random attacks. Um, here we go again, 38,000 on this one. We wasted 25,000 troops to try to, uh, try to take that over. A lot of wasted troops. Here we end up losing D or our uh, building to uh, um, the actual Rebels. And again, just a lot of stuff. We try not to expend too many troops here. We let the rebels take down some of our tiles so that way as we go into the second part of the round, we kind of placed our guys here. Really, uh, I was gone for the day here, so I'm really not sure how we ended up getting A1, honestly, because uh, our goal was to be down this way. I'm sure either we had a random person uh, either attack or maybe they were just low enough and we did it and went for it. We ended up actually wasting so many troops trying to take D3 that, again, we ran into not having a whole lot of target zones. And I believe there was a couple of them at the last second. We lost some of these strongholds that we wanted to be at. So it kind of put us into a rough, a rough structure here. And so that way when you get to the final round here again, we have to rebuild. So we picked these guys here and we drew our targets in to try to see if we can attack. Here's again where we start getting into some pretty big battles. Um, maybe it was at the end of the next round. And we're just starting to get kind of get beat up on troops here. Um, but again, we're trying to stay as strong as we can and we end up finishing with one, two, three, four, five, six this round. So I mean, as you see, they dropped 41,000 um, on just D4 alone. So um, just too much battling. Um, you know, it's it's all, you never know what, what the other team is going to do. And, you know, you have only a certain amount of elixir to use with. So, but that, that kind of explains your rounds. And then you go into round 16. We start with round one, round 17 right now. I have it set up with D1 because we're going to try to take C1, E1, and then D2 for this next next round. Um, I also have it set up down here because we can take um, E4, we can take E6 in the last round. Um, here we can take uh, C5, we can take C6 if we win these if we win these target rounds. Um, we can take back our D4. So it's kind of like, kind of just, again, points different tiles out. And our goal is to finish with round 18 with uh, 12 tiles. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try to jump on some of these other tiles in here if um, the cards fall right. So if this one right here, if they keep it fairly low, we'll jump and try to attack that. We might be able to grab... Um, different tiles in here as it goes in but we have eight hours and two minutes before round two is actually over and we got to see where they're actually at for actual uh damage on the tiles um see like right here there's not a huge amount on there but who knows what they're going to finish with same thing here 702 you know we might end up taking this one early and that gives us access to this this uh, uh b5 up there so you kind of got to play with everything if you can attack later in the rounds, um, usually within the last couple minutes, you get a good jump on it. You also get to see where people have attacked. You really don't show your hand or your cards until um, you see what you're up against. And we kind of did that a couple times. You know, we were putting troops on and we would build up too many troops in one area. And uh, where we forgot to take the target off for too long and then half our team would attack you know, one big tile and we waste a lot of our troops and that really backs you up on what you can attack down the road. So 
couple of our guys are asking why we're not attacking round one or why we're not really aggressive round one or really aggressive round two. It's we want that third round to be the really aggressive round one and two is just building up to where we want to be able to attack from many different areas. And round three, save as many people as we possibly can to snipe. And if we can have each person hit a tile and we have 10 more people to attack, plus whatever tiles we were holding, you can really kind of clean up a map um, if you have a strong, strong group or strong clan. So that's pretty much bringing down rounds. Um, as far as um, troop count, when you go to your troops, you kind of come in here. So in here, you can actually hit this little button and it actually will bring who has the most troops used in the clan and who still has troops left. So if you bring this down here, it's going to kind of put you in order. So as you see, Money Grab here used uh, 12,450 Elixir already in this round and, and used 25,000 uh, or put in 25,000 troops. So that's a phenomenal amount of troops. But that's a lot of elixir used in round two, uh, one and two of this last round, um, which I, I don't remember exactly why we used it. Maybe it was used in round one to secure a certain spot because, like I said, Battle Rush has been kind of beating us up. And to get our strongholds that we've needed, we've needed some really strong end snipers. So, uh, But again, it breaks down to what each, each person used. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, in elixir. It's also going to break down how many troops you did, and you can see what place in the in the clan you are right now with what you have. The 600 left and the 967 left, that's actually a glitch in the game right now. Uh, those are actually aren't what's left over. Um, so anytime you see a, 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 a clan made attack, more than likely they used all the clans or all the troops. Uh, that actually brings me to another good point. Anytime you attack. Unless there's some other special reason um, that the, um, let me plug my phone in here real quick, sorry, that the uh, guild master uh, or the GM um, specifies, you want to use all of your attacks on one tile so that you're not wasting elixir. If you go and attack here on this tile right now and you drop 600 or 800 or 1,000 troops, if you take and use bump that up to 3150 elixir, it's going to give all of those troops a boost. Well, now if you only use two or three of your guys and you put two or three of your guys here, you're only going to get elixir on your two or three guys here. It doesn't give you the elixir boost on both tiles. Some people say, well, this one's got a 50% chaos uh, boost and this one's got a 50% order boost. So I'm going to take my order guys here and my chaos guys here. You don't get a big enough boost with that 50%, depending on how much elixir you're using, to make up for that split of troops. Now, sometimes it comes down to where you might only need 100 here uh, and a couple troops here or something like that to build, to build two tiles. And then it would make sense to do that and not, not uh, divvy up the extra elixir. So you have to listen to what the instructions are. And it has to make sense, but for the most part, you want to put all of your troops on one tile and build your elixir from there. So, like, we have a couple guys that we're taking, and uh, this might be part of the reason where we were here. I know we had a couple people were taking a lot of their troops and putting them on three different tiles and then taking their elixir account, and at that point, having to boost three different tiles which is costing a lot of elixir um and that's where we're getting to elixir trouble so that's why we always say try to hit one tile if you're going to use elixir you're only going to hit one tile if you're not using elixir and it makes sense to drop a couple hundred here and there and there um then we'll do that but you want to listen to your your clan master um your gm for all that kind of stuff so oops getting back out of there so that's kind of going over troop count. You have your time over here. We had a couple people asking about time. So each round. So the top one right here, the seven hours and 57 minutes, is whatever round you're in, that's when that round ends. Now, again, you want to try to attack. If you're going to attack as close to the end of that round as absolutely possible. Now, obviously, if you can't wait till the end or you can't wait till round three, we would rather you attack and get your troops out there than to completely miss the entire clash. 
which we've had some people doing, so you got to be careful. Now your 14 hour and 6 minute, that's going to be the end of your 3 rounds, so that'll be the end of round 18. So that shows 14 hours and 6 minutes, that's when the clash for that 3 round period, or 3 round clash is going to be over, and then you get your rewards for however many, um, however many tiles you took, and... Um, you know, it divvies it up again into the end of the clan. And then you get your, all your troops come back and you get to do it again for the next day. Now that's usually a 24 hour period. So your first round, you have six hours uh, for attack. Your second, second round, there's usually 12 hours before the end of the round. And then you have another six hours again before round three ends. So that's your 24 hours. And then it starts back over again. Round four would have six hours before it ends. Round five would have 12 hours before it ends. Round six, again, for your rewards and resets, you got another six hours before it's finished. The nice thing is the same time every single day. So if you just kind of plan on when you're going to be attacking, uh, I, I designated in my clan, I'm one of the officers, uh, that I would like to snipe third round. So I know at 149 every day, I have multiple alarms set, um, you know, I actually said about 10 minutes early because the clash ends at 1.49 p.m. And at that point, I know to get on there, get on my Discord, find out what my orders are, get prepared to attack, so that way I can attack within the last minute. So now we're going to kind of go over attacking. It's going to be hard to show attacking um, without actually having a round to attack. So we're going to jump up here and see if it'll let me show it here. So say I want to attack this, this clan right here. So I would hit attack, and you could actually select what you have. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking, I got my legendary guy, kind of beefed him all up a little bit here. Um, haven't spent any money on actual buying um, uh, actual um, rewards or upgrades for him. I just took what was given to me at the uh, tur Turf War Reset, and I kind of saved up enough to where I got my legendary guy. I have been using, and I'm not 100% sure if this is the right thing yet, but I have been using my gems to buy the bonus stuff that when you go in here to your deals, down here every day it resets to give you a once-in-a-lifetime offer every single day for some reason. Uh, 100 gems you can use there. Same thing here. You can use 100 gems to get 150 of your upgrades. And then down here, you can use 100 gems to get your actual Seals of Valor. I'm going to do that for just a little bit, just until I get my troops kind of beefed up. And once they're beefed up enough, um, we're going to kind of jump in. And uh, I'm going to start working on getting my second legendary guy. So I'll start saving up my Seals of Valors uh, until I can get him and get him beefed up. Then I'm going to just kind of, kind of trickle down the line and um, you know, get everyone that I can get back up to where we need to be at for troop count. So, again, jumping into attacking, hit attack. Attacking all tiles, so you select all. Then I'm not going to do it right now because I, I want to be able to do it. So you would hit attack, and then here you boost, and this boosts your elixir. So once you hit your attack, you can boost and you can actually pick your elixir. Uh, what a lot of people will do as well, they'll attack... But they'll attack with just within a couple, with maybe two minutes left. They'll attack with one guy. And then they can boost that guy up a couple rounds with Elixir. And then you could add your other troops in at the very end. That's another easier way to, um, to snipe. Uh, I personally, within 10 seconds left, I can click all. Hit all of them. Hit the attack button. Hit my boost. And I just use my top one, depending on how many if I need. If I need 3150, I think it's three clicks. Um, you know, and depending on what I, what I need, you just kind of bump that up and within 10 seconds, you can attack. You could also kind of see up here, the countdown. So a lot of times you can kind of watch up here, uh, or you'll see it drop here. What confused me my first time ta attacking, it'll say one minute. So it'll have instead of 50 or seven hours, 52 minutes, it'll say one minute, uh, M. I thought that meant the one minute. I didn't know it was going to give me an actual one minute countdown by the exact second. So I jumped in and did my attack earlier. If you actually wait till this says 12 seconds, 12 seconds, I jump in here. I click attack. I click all. 
I hit my attack button, boost, one, two, three, four, boom, done. All my troops are, are dropped within 10 seconds. That really makes it hard for the other clan to attack or see what you're going to do. They're pretty much just going to be guessing the same as, you know, kind of same as you are, but they're going to be kind of guessing at what you're going to be throwing up there. And at that point, whoever has the most troops on that tile wins that battle. So obviously if this was the end, um, battle or this clan right there with 106 troops and then this clan right here, Thailand would take over the, the tile uh, piece. Um, so that's pretty much the attacking. You want to make sure you always attack. Don't leave your clan members hanging. Um, there's a lot of people that are spending lots of hard-earned elixir, uh, lots of time. Uh, like I said, I just, just graduated to an officer. I probably spend three quarters of the day on this game trying to help build up strategy, trying to help build up my troops, trying to help get people rallied up to get them to attack, to make sure they're attacking, um, and then try to give them reminders to make sure that, hey, I know I talked to you three hours ago. I just want to make sure the clan's getting ready to uh, attack for the clash, make sure they're ready. Just try to make sure you attack because that really helps out with a, a lot of people. Um, as far as elixir, as you bump up with the elixir, your troops are going to double. They're going to triple. They're going to do different things. What's, I'm sorry, it's a percentage of the amount of troops you have, the more amount of times you use the elixir. Um, you're only going to want to try to use as much elixir, elixir to get to where you need to be. Like right here, we're at 18,997 to 14,215 or 213. You know, when you put all your troops down, it shows that you jumped up a, uh, uh, to 15,000. You can actually see your troop count on the bottom corner uh, when you actually hit the attack button. And it'll tell you what your troops are. you got to remember where you need to be. And then just hit hit that mark and uh, kind of move on to the next level. Um, so that's kind of going over the rounds. That's going over attacking. That's going over your troop count. Um, another guy asked how you tell how many troops you have left. So, oops, keep clicking this button here. So we'll go down to like mine because I haven't attacked yet this round. So here's our GM. He's got 1,402. We got uh, um, four Knell. Um, he's another big sniper we have. So we have a lot of our snipers built up and waiting till round three. Here I'm sitting at 1919. And um, I'm going to hit with 10 seconds left. I'll probably use probably close to eight or 9,000 elixir this round because it's the last round. Uh, but I'll use whatever we have to do to get up to where we need to be at. Uh, but down here it will show how many troops you have left, show you how many you've attacked with, it shows how much elixir you used. And so again here, so Adam 11 has used 928 troops, he used 30 elixir. Joe used 2127 troops, he used 3150 elixir. Um, again, don't mind the, once they've attacked here, don't look at the left um, because it's a, it's a glitch. So if they haven't attacked, then you can kind of guess that's roughly what their troop levels are and kind of go from there. So as you see, we're in the second to last round and we still have quite a few people left to attack. And we'll have them hit just before, I'll probably have three or four of them hit just before the end. And at that, we're going to try to hit this one, we'll try to hit this, we'll try to hit this. And we'll grab maybe one or two of these other ones depending on... Uh, what the actual levels are on them and we'll jump it into round 18 hopefully with 10 different people at, uh, left to snipe and at that point we want to be able to finish with at least 12 tiles in this first battle so that kind of goes over everything the last thing we kind of want to go over is going over into discord so going over to discord you're going to have multiple different channels um, you know, we have, um, since I'm putting this on YouTube, I don't want to go into the channels, but we have our, our channels all set up here. Like we have our war room chat where we talk about what we're going to do leadership chat, where we have the leaders of the group kind of going over strategy before we actually uh, bring them out to the war group. We have a turf war rally, which is kind of cool. You can click on this. If you hit the I'm here button, it actually takes and puts in how many troops you have left. And uh, if you have 9 or 10 or 12 people left, it'll give you a grand total down here 
of how many troops you can actually attack with and kind of helps you build up um, where you need to be at or where, where you what you know you can deploy. You also have a cool one here that shows misdeploying. Oops, I didn't want to click on it. Misdeploying shows who is actually um, missed that round or why they missed the round. Uh, your bot channel tells you, um, again, who missed, who hit, how many troops you had left. Um, so it, it, we, have a, we have a lot of different things. So if you're in our clan, we highly, highly suggest going into Discord. Again, you have so many different breakdowns here of how to uh, grow your troops, how to keep your troops in synergy, how to go through your Hall of Fame. Um, you know, again, we have a whole Turf War channel to kind of break all this stuff down uh, where we post videos, we, we give guidance. Um, you know, it really, it really, really helps jump on here. Discord doesn't cost anything. You could even mute the channels if you absolutely need to. Um, and then kind of jump back in at certain times and check them. Um, the nice thing is we can tag you just to kind of make sure that you're available for the stuff. Um, but Discord is really, really, really a good way to have your clan and everything kind of keep in synergy and know what is what you need to attack, where you need to be at, what's going on. So lastly, remember that you have 18 different rounds which breaks down into six different clashes, three rounds at a time. Keep an eye on your times. You can also go into here. This breaks down and shows you what each clan has in level, uh, how many each, each uh, how many pieces of turf they have, where you rank at. Um, now, obviously, rank is all changing around depending on where you got thrown in from the, the new setup. Um, and you can kind of go in and, uh, look at the different clans too. So you can see who you're against. You can see roughly how many troops each one person has deployed. You can see how many troops they still have left. So like going up against mostly for battle Russia, as you see, a lot of their people have attacked. I mean, this guy dropped 39,000 troops, 19,000 troops. We have a couple officers haven't attacked yet. And you can use this as strategy as well to kind of know how many people you have left um, before you start throwing stuff down. If you see that they've used almost all their troops, you have one or two guys left, you know that they can't break up a whole lot. That's pretty much all, all about Turf Wars for the basics. Now obviously there's some advanced, you know, how we figure out what tiles, tiles to take, um, building alliances. Um, another thing with Discord, you have an entire Alliance channel. Um, you want to build up and be strong with different people, um, uh, which would make it a lot easier. You're not constantly battling all the time. Um, you have how much elixir you have in the corner up here. So, oops, hit the buttons here. So it tells you how many, how many elixir rounds you have. Other than that, I think that's about all I have. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you have anything that you think is different, please let me know again, because I'm still learning as well. Uh, like I said, I really just started doing Turf Wars about three weeks ago. Um, really haven't done a whole lot into, the, into that until I became an officer and had to learn quite a bit. And so some of those things I actually said might not be the best way to do it or the most accurate way to do it. So if you guys see something that would help out, uh, more than welcome to put a comment on here. Um, obviously this isn't the only way to do it. This is kind of how I, how I look at it and kind of try to help build our clan up and, um, kind of go through there. Obviously we roll on the GM. Uh, he does most of the battle orders. He does most of the kind of strategizing and doing all that kind of stuff. I just kind of feed off of all that and kind of learn as much as I can as I can. So, all right, this will be all I have for you. Uh, I'll hopefully be able to post some more videos down the road and um, see if I can help any guidance. All right, you guys all have a good one. Thanks a lot.